and welcome to this special holiday edition of Imagine, a celebration of Children's Hospital Los Angeles. I'm Stana Kadic, and we're here today to pay tribute to the wonderful doctors, nurses, and other caregivers who do so much for our community all year round. This hospital is ranked by US News and World Report as one of the top pediatric facilities in the nation, and it's not hard to see why. Recently, I had the good fortune to meet some of these remarkable lifesavers and the brave families who depend on them. And I have to tell you, I was quite simply blown away by their warmth, expertise, and dedication. And that's why I'm here today, to share with you just what it takes to provide world-class pediatric care for the sickest of the sick all over this city and beyond. Children's Hospital Los Angeles treats kids with all kinds of serious life-threatening problems, but few are quite as heart-wrenching as the subject of our first story, child abuse. It's heartbreaking to think that some people deliberately harm the most fragile members of our community. But it's reassuring to know that Children's Hospital Los Angeles is home to a highly qualified team whose mission is to heal the child and, ultimately, help bring the perpetrators to justice. Child abuse is not a biological disorder, not an illness or an infection or a virus. It's a crime. There are children who have been, you know, immersed in hot water. There are children who have been violently shaken. Sometimes we don't see injuries. Sometimes only the autopsy reveals what the injury is. It is an unfathomable thing that, that, that anybody could look at a child and abuse them in any way, shape, or form. I believe it is the cruelest thing that happens in our world. It's a cruelty committed by someone you probably know. Child abusers look like you and I. There is no profile of a child abuser. It happens in every race, every religion, every culture, every ethnicity. Sometimes the abuser can be the person you expect the least or trust the most. Bernie and Valerie Vanderyat already had a happy family when on Father's Day 2003, their youngest son, Joseph, was born. Joseph was a beautiful young baby. He was full of life uh, right away, smiley and happy. Like many proud parents, when Joseph was a month old, the Vanderyats had portraits taken with their newest addition. Strangely, the usually well-behaved baby squirmed in their arms. He appeared to be so uncomfortable. We noticed he was arching his back a lot, a look of pain in his face. His brow was furrowed. Over the next two months, as Joseph slowly grew more irritable, Bernie and Valerie tried everything to make him more comfortable, from repeated visits to their pediatrician, to homeopathic medicine, to child chiropractors. I used to pride myself, I was pretty good at changing diapers, like really fast. I remember I would pick up his legs and you know, put the diaper under, and he would just scream in pain, and I, I, I could not understand why changing a diaper could be so painful. Worse yet, Joseph began regressing physically. Things he could do a week prior, he was no longer being able to do, like lift his head up. It progressively got worse, so by the end of it, he was crying constantly, constantly, every night, every night. It was like this mystery illness that he had. Joseph's deterioration accelerated until one night, Bernie looked into his baby's eyes and saw something that simply terrified him. He was lying in his crib, and I remember his eyes were open in the dark, and he was looking off, and it's like he had just given up on life. Panicked, Bernie and Valerie rushed Joseph, now three months old, to Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Developmental and behavioral pediatrician Karen K. Imagawa quickly took over the case. When Joseph first came into the hospital, it was really kind of a medical mystery, sort of a diagnostic dilemma as to what was really going on. Over five days, the doctors at Children's Hospital performed test after test on the tiny baby. Blood tests, CAT scans, MRIs. And it was probably the darkest time of my whole life. They waited for the results of one final test, a skeletal survey or x-ray of every part of Joseph's body. 
The social worker walked through the door and said, you might want to sit down. I have some life-altering news to tell you. But the x-rays uh, showed that Joseph had uh, many, many broken bones. Um, he had a skull fracture, fractures of both of his legs, as well as of his rib cage. And that from looking at these, these injuries, there is no other conclusion they could make, but this was non-accidental. Violent abuse. It was like a tidal wave hit us. I, I thought, that's why when I was changing his diaper, he cried so much, I was holding his, his ankles, ankles that, that oh, yeah, were broken. broken. Then, reality set in. Joseph wasn't sick. He had been abused. But by whom? For me going in there to have to tell Mr. and Mrs. Vandiat, yes, somebody has hurt your child, it is really hard to have to do that, but I also feel and I need to know everyone is a potential suspect, including the parents. We had formed such a relationship with these doctors during the week. I remember thinking, did they suspect us this whole time? Like Joseph, many victims of child abuse can't speak, can't tell you who's hurting them. <laughs> 